Praised be Jesus and Mary. Everything that the Father gives me will come to me, and I will not reject anyone who comes to me. In the midst of our Lord's discourse on the bread of life, on his own body and blood and soul and divinity, hidden under the appearances of bread and wine, the mystery of the Eucharist that we are now celebrating, it's good that we stop to meditate on these words for just a second. Our Lord says that he is the bread of life, who those who come to him will never hunger. Then he tells us that it's the Father himself who gives all those who come to our Lord are given to him by the Father. It's good to stop and reflect on this and, and realize once again that we being here and, and, our, and, uh, and our everything, our devotion, our prayers, our, our, our turning towards God, all of that is, is a response to an, an initiative on, on, on God's part. It is God the Father who gives each and every one of us to his Son. It is God the Father who leads each and every one of us to his Son. Therefore, the Son rejects no one. And this is a, a good thought to have for, for many reasons. Uh, I've, I think I've, I've repeated this a, a number of times, and, uh, and it's not bad because we need, to, uh, we need to have this repeated over and over again so that kind of becomes a pattern of thought that we are here at Mass, for example, not because we're great people and we're good and, and God is impressed by that. We're here because God is good and he has inspired us to be daily mass goers, maybe. He has inspired us to be here today. He has inspired us to come and, and eat of the bread of life. He has inspired us here to, to, to pray to him. He has inspired every good thought in us. It's not because we're good, it's because he is good that we, that we, have, that we share in any, in any, uh, in any measure in that, in, that, in that goodness of his. And for that reason, our Lord rejects no one, none of those who come to him because he inspires them to come, because he has good things to give to them. We're not, uh, another good thing to remember to, you know, on the one hand, we want to ward off any presumption. Oh, look, we're great. We're here. We're holy. No, it's God who's good. He makes us holy because he's holy. The other thought we want to ward off is any kind of a dejection, despondency, despair. It's not an angry God we're trying to propitiate or an indifferent God that we're trying to get to acknowledge us. No. God himself inspires us to come, inspires us to approach him because he's got good things to give to us. He's got graces and gifts to bestow upon us. He inspires us to ask for them. He inspires us to come and receive them. Obviously, he rejects no one who comes at his own bidding, at his own inspiration. This should ward off any, again, any kind of discouragement, any kind of despair, and then any kind of frustration. Because we are not trying to impress God with, with something. No, we should rather be impressed by God and his love for us. And the last thought in this, uh, this Mass is a votive Mass of Our Lady, Mediatrix of All Graces. And that, too, is, is something that our Lord put in our hearts to do and to honor his mother in this month of, of May, but also to honor his mother just as, as Christians. He wants us to acknowledge her as his own mother, as our mother as well, as the mediatrix of all these good things that he gives to us and who come to us in the surest, safest, most beautiful way when we invoke her intercession, when we respond to, to our Lord's invitation to, to be like him in all things, son of man, son of God, son of Mary as well. So as we turn now towards the altar of the Eucharist, let's keep these thoughts in mind and let's open our hearts with Our Lady's help, with Our Lady's intercession to all those blessings that our Lord wants to give us today in this Mass, especially in the reception of the Holy Eucharist, His own body, blood, soul, and divinity. Praised be Jesus and Mary.